Hello everyone, my name is Aura and welcome to the 11th devlog of my base building game Chambers of Devious Design. Many of you have asked me for a recap of what the game is about. So in this devlog, I will first give you a brief overview of what the game is about, what kind of themes are involved and how I envision the game will be played. After that, I will go through what I have done in the past two weeks. Things like testing Steam Remote Play and adding some bonus goals to the game. Okay, but let's start with the recap. Thematically, the premise of the game is that there is this evil mastermind guy who has a need for a new evil hideout, or more like 100 new hideouts. To put things in motion, he sends out his henchmen to build and design suitably evil hideouts for him. You as a player are one of these henchmen. The evil mastermind is also very particular with what he likes, so you will be competing against the other henchmen to build a hideout that is best suited for the evil mastermind. That is pretty much the theme that I am going for. It's not very visible in the gameplay yet, as I'm now focusing more on how the systems function rather than how they tie into the team. But speaking of systems, let's talk a bit about how I am envisioning that the game will be played. The core gameplay loop will be about choosing new rooms out of limited options and then placing those rooms to be part of the evil hideout that you are building. This in itself is very simple, but to excel in the game, there are many things you need to consider when choosing and placing the rooms. First of all, the rooms can only be connected to each other through open doorways, so you will need to consider where to place new rooms so that they fit and so that your future rooms will also fit. Then on top of that, the rooms are all different. They have different shapes, different amounts of doorways, and they give different amounts of points. The rooms also have different room types as indicated by their color, which have a big impact on the gameplay. For instance, the room types have preferences of what other room types they want to be neighbors with and who they don't want to be neighbors with. For example, a red room might want to be next to orange rooms, but at the same time be far away from blue rooms. Whether or not you take this preferences into account will determine if they will affect your gameplay positively or negatively. Then on top of that, the room types will have special effects. One major concept with the rooms will be the completion of rooms. If you manage to fill all the open doorways of a room so that they are connected to other rooms, that room will count as a completed room, which will usually award you with a positive special effect. For example, give you a new turn to add an extra room to your hideout. Then there are of course the other players that will also affect your gameplay. The other players might pick rooms right under your nose that you wanted to have, or they might block your placement options with their own hideout. Luckily, you can also blow up their rooms to dish out some sweet payback. All these extra features on top of the basic gameplay loop, together with some procedural generation sprinkled on top is meant to make it so that you have a lot of competing objectives, making it hard to know which move is the most optimal one. This will allow you to discover new tactics and end up in unique situations that might require a new, unique course of action. I will also be adding different game modes and some type of a progression system between the matches. So, all things considered, the game should have plenty of exciting turn-based gameplay to offer. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire concept. I could go in deeper about the different features, but I want to keep this recap nice and <laughs> relatively short. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer those in this video's comments. Alright, let's move on to what I did in the last two weeks. The first thing I did this week was try to play my game through Steam Remote Play. If you haven't heard about the feature, it basically allows local multiplayer games to be played over the internet between Steam friends. It does this by streaming the game from one player's PC and allowing others then to watch that stream and also connect their input devices to that game session. Anyway, I tested it out and aside from one controller detection bug, which I was able to circumvent, it seemed to work great. I don't think adding a true multiplayer option to my game is worth the effort, 
So my plan is now to enable local multiplayer, which then enables the game to be played over the internet between friends with Steam Remote Play. I think this would prove to be a nice middle of the road solution where I don't need to spend an unreasonable amount of time developing a multiplayer feature, but I can still enable the option to play against your friends over the internet. With that out of the way, I started working on a small scale quest slash bonus call system. The naming is still a bit up in the air, but the idea behind this system is that in each game round there will be randomized bonus objectives that you can reach for and then be rewarded if you are the first player who reaches that objective. This system was pretty quick to implement and works great in the game. I also made it so that the AI can see these objectives and has a small incentive bonus to try and complete them. I still need to add more objective types, fine tune the numbers and polish the visuals. But since the system is already in a pretty good state, I don't want to get ahead of myself and start over-engineering it. So I decided to start working on something else. That something else was another new feature that I am calling a perk system. My idea with this system is that within a round of game, through completing rooms or other means, you can gain these perks, which then enable you to get more points for specific rune types or for doing certain actions. You can have, for example, a red room perk, which will give you an extra two score points for each red room you place, or a room destruction perk, which will give you an extra two score points for each room you destroy. Things like that. Once I had implemented the feature, I gave the blue rooms a completion bonus of granting you a random new perk, or sometimes improving an existing perk. I'm thinking I will probably add some type of a selection screen for this effect, instead of it being truly random, so I can make the RNG feel a bit more pleasant. But for now, I'll keep it as random. When you receive a perk, you will now receive bonus score for each room you control that matches that perk. After enabling perks that are tied to specific room types, I added a perk that gives you bonus score for destroying rooms. Fun side note, you can also get this bonus for destroying your own rooms. Maybe there will be some rare situations where destroying your own rooms is actually the best option. After that, I also added a perk that gives you bonus score for gaining new special ability cards. Not much else to say about that one, except that I will aim to add more similar special perks like that as I move forward. But as this system now too has a solid working base, I leave further improvements for another day. My idea with adding these two new features ties into the competing objectives that I mentioned in the recap. By having features like bonus goals and bonus perks, choosing a room is not just a case of hmm, which room gives me the most points. You also need to consider if that room furthers your secondary goals and if furthering those secondary goals outweighs the benefit of only furthering your main goal. It might be worthwhile or the bonus goal might just be a red herring that causes you to make non-optimal plays. Whichever the case, this adds more dimensions to whenever the player is making choices, which I ultimately hope contributes to a more interesting and enjoyable game. As my next course of action, I decided I would add a few new completion effects for my room types that don't have a completion effect yet. I started with giving the grey rooms a completion bonus of granting bonus score for each room that they are touching. This is a very basic bonus effect, but I think it will still provide a nice and simple to understand extra dynamic to the room. Like, should you complete the room right away when you can, or should you maybe wait a few turns and see if you can place more rooms next to it for some extra points before closing it up. I like the idea of giving the players lots of small things like this to think about, so there's more room for improving your tactics within the game. After that, I gave my red rooms a bit more complex completion effect. Now, when the red rooms are completed, they will activate the completion effects of all their neighbors. This can be a 
very very powerful effect and I am a bit afraid if it might be impossible to balance out in the end but it's an interesting effect and it was easy to add so I want to give it a chance as soon as I added this effect I thought okay so what if you have two red rooms next to each other and complete one of them well I knew what was going to happen but I still had to give it a try yep it freezes and eventually crashes the game. So I added a quick fix that now the red rooms can't enter a loop of boosting each other. I hope the effect won't cause many other issues as I would like to keep it in the game. Anyways, I will very likely have to nerf or adjust it in some way as the effect is too powerful currently unless I make it very rare or otherwise harder to obtain. But I leave it like it is for now and Worry about the balance later when the gameplay is closer to being fully defined. And that's everything I did in the last two weeks. There were quite a few non-game dev related things that took a lot of my time, but I'm happy that I was still able to make some progress. I think next week I'll be able to put in more hours again. But hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.